Today I'll be talking about forces in one dimension. Uh, first, you need to know a little bit about free body diagrams. All right, that's just how we represent something with vectors. All right, so we're trying to convert, say, something like this, a box laying on a flat surface, because we are in one dimension. We want to represent it on a regular graph. So take a look at the vectors. Um, we know so far a couple of the forces acting on this box are the acceleration of gravity pulling the box down, but for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So this, the force here, we know F equals MA, is the mass of the box times negative 9.8. And then the ground is pushing back up on the box to avoid it from falling through the floor. So our second vector would be the normal force. So that's N, and that is MA. So when we represent it here, we're just going to have the normal force, N, and then the force of gravity pulling down these are the exact same vector, just opposite in direction. Alright, so let's take a look at some examples. The equation we're going to be using is F equals MA, that's Newton's second law. Force is a vector, mass is a scalar, an acceleration is a vector. A scalar times a vector gives us a vector, so that makes sense. <clears throat> so number one, you and your bike have a combined mass of 80 kilograms, so M equals 80 kilograms. How much braking force would it take you to slow down from 5 meters per second to 2 meters per second? So we know a VF is 2, we could say 2.0 meters per second, V naught was 5 meters per second, and we want to know the force. We also know time is 2 seconds. So with those, time equals 2 seconds. Alright, well, we know we need some form of acceleration. So, we have everything we need for that. We have uh, change in velocity over change in time. That gives us acceleration. So A, acceleration, equals delta V over delta T. So our acceleration is 5, well, 5 minus 2, which is 3 divided by 2 seconds, so our acceleration is 1.5 meters per second squared. Now we know our mass, so therefore we know our force. Force equals 80 kilograms times 1.5 meters per second squared, which gives us 120 newtons. Now notice throughout this problem we kept two significant figures, <clears throat> because most of the time in physics you are going to be using significant figures. And another thing to know, our measure of force is newtons, so you should know newtons equals k 
kilograms times meters per second squared. Okay, next problem. Before opening his parachute, a skydiver with mass 90 kilograms experiences up an upward force of 150 newtons. So first, we should picture this before answering any questions. We have a skydiver with free, to, free body diagram. Um, force being pulled downward is his mass times acceleration, which would be 90. Well, we'll just say mg for now. All right. And then we also know um, there's an upward force from air resistance of 150 newtons. So 150 newtons from air resistance. All right, so first question, what is the net force acting on the skydiver? So you know force equals mass times acceleration. But we have two forces here, so we're going to add these up. This is negative, this is positive. So, force equals, our mass of the skydiver is 90, and gravity is 9.8. So, the force is going to be 90 times 9.8. And that's negative plus 150 newtons. That'll be our net force. So we get a net force of negative 732 newtons. Or you could say 732 newtons downward. What is the skydiver's acceleration? Okay, well we have to look at the problem the same way using our typical equations. Since we know F equals MA, and we're looking for acceleration, let's solve for acceleration. Take the derivative. So acceleration equals force, net force, over mass. Well, we know our net force is negative 732. Newtons divided by our mass of 90 kilograms. Our net acceleration is negative 8.1 meters per second squared. 